Well, thank you for uh, coming to this talk. My name is Aaron Wolfson, and I'm talking about how to be a conscious coder. And the answer is coffee. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I didn't bring any slides. I was hoping to have something to like write stuff down, but it's too late for that, so you'll just have to uh, keep it up here. Um, and I don't, if anyone has like any comments or questions as I'm speaking, like don't hesitate to interrupt or if you want to tell a story about one of my examples or a suggestion of how you've uh, dealt with a principle, please uh, chime in. Um, so what I, the, the reason I wanted to give this talk is because um, I've been a professional coder for about four years now. Um, so, you know, I feel like I'm just sort of starting to learn how to be a coder in an environment where other people are reliant on my work, me and my work, and are, you know, I have to collaborate with other people and it's not just my personal product. So, and the biggest thing I've learned so far is that code is not about code. It's, it's easy to get really hung up on, um, you know, particulars of language or, you know, style or text editor, but ultimately code is just a tool to solve problems for humans. And if you work in an organization of any size, um, you know, you're going to have to make sacrifices and you're going to have to help people understand um, what you're doing to solve problems and you know, what the options are. Um, so the, the number one thing I want to talk about is um, learning the business. So a lot of, you know, when I first started coding, um, you know, I felt like I wanted to be in this little bubble. Um, you know, it didn't really matter who I was coding for or what, like, the greater, you know, the bus greater business needs were. Um, but as I said, you know, you're solving problems for people, and code is just a tool to get that done. So, um, you know, you, you're going to have to like, make decisions sometimes without being able to ask um, what the business necessarily wants. And you know, you're, you know, as a coder, you have to make you know, dozens of little design decisions all the time. And you, know, you can't go and ask someone, um, whether it be like a sales rep or um, you know, a business analyst or even your boss, you can't go every time and try to figure out, like, you know, uh, it, does this fit into the brand, or you know, is this piece of business logic, you know, exactly what they're expecting? You know, most of the time, um, that's not going to be possible because otherwise, you'd be doing this all day. So, you know, part of being a, a conscious coder is is being integrated into the the goals and of the organization that you're working for. Um, so that leads me to uh, my second point, which is possibly the biggest one, which is communication. So um, it's just kind of a fact that um, you're going to be dealing with people who don't know how to code, but who, um, you know, they're just as important a part of an organization as you are, even if you're working on, um, you know, like, a website where you, know, you literally would not have a product if it wasn't for code, the, re the, uh, the reverse is true that you know, if there was no product to sell, you also you would have nothing to code. So you know, it's important. I, I felt at times that you know, the stuff I'm doing is maybe like harder or like more you know, intellectually like demanding than what like a business analyst does or even like a designer. And you know, I just had to learn quickly to to banish those thoughts from my head because um, you know we're all again you know we're all working towards the same goals, which is not to produce perfect code. It's not to produce a perfect design. It's to make something that you know allows people to buy things that they want, or to learn, or to you know do any other number of things to make their lives easier. Um, and I have a, a couple uh, stories about communicating. So. I used to be like a very anxious person and you know I was I still deal with imposter syndrome all the time um, 
and one of the consequences of that was I would often try to hide it if I made a mistake. So you know as a coder that that will always come back to bite you in the ass. Like someone's going to find it eventually. And so <laughs> I learned very quickly that the sooner someone finds out about that, the better. And you're going to be much you know, more respected and trusted if you come to someone right away and admit, you know, listen, you know, this isn't working on tests because you know, I, I made this logic error and you know, I'm going to need an hour or two to fix it and it's going to be fine. Whereas you know, if you notice something's wrong and it's like the night before a push or something and you wait for it to go into production and wait for people to freak out or try to you know, wait for it to be blamed on someone else, like, you know, a lot of times code that you wrote, you know, may not play nicely with code that someone else wrote. Even if you didn't create the bug, even if someone from the business comes in and says, hey, this isn't working, like, you know, you guys need to fix this. Like, even if I didn't personally write the code that caused the problem that they're talking about, you know, you, you kind of have to, to explain to them, you know, they're, they're not going to care, like, who did it. Um, you know, so whether it was like your mistake or not, you know, I try to take the posture of learning from my mistakes and sort of, you know, helping people understand that no, as coders, we're not infallible. Things will happen, but we're gonna, you know, work as well as we can to to solve it, even if that means you know going sort of above and beyond what your like responsibilities are in coding terms. Um, Another one, a big one, is confusing requirements. So, you know, that happens to us all where, you know, things get lost in translation from what the business wants to when it actually comes time to write some code. You know, there's always going to be misunderstandings. Um, you know, because English is a language just like coding, as Josh pointed out earlier, uh, if you saw his talk. Um, and again, you know, we're all in this together. We're all trying to solve a greater problem. So, you know, don't be afraid to, to admit when you are confused about something or if you misunderstand. Or, you know, similarly, if there are multiple ways to do something, um, you know, you can make that clear. You can't, you know, don't pretend that you're like the all-knowing guru who's going to get it right the first time every time. Uh, or, you know, claim to read minds. You know, it's, it's another sort of uh, manifestation of not being afraid to um, speak out if you don't know something or if you're uncomfortable with something. It's always going to be better if you ask sooner than if you ask later. Because if you code something, you know, it gets into test, you know, there's limited time, the clock's running, and you know, a lot of times there's not going to be time to, to fix something. And you don't want to have, um, you don't want to have to delay pushing a feature because you were too chicken to ask, like, well, you know, did you want um, you know, this shade of red or that shade of red or, or something? You know, that's a very simple example. But, um, <laughs> so, and similarly, um, you know, admitting what you don't know. So um, if someone asks you to do something, you know, be honest and say, you know, I don't know how to do that, but I'm willing to learn. It's going to take me probably about this long to, to get up to speed on it or, you know, you know, I'd be happy to do this, but you know, I'm going to need some help from so and so. You know, is it okay if I um, ask you to go, you know, or or if I go ask this person myself, um, you know, to help teach me something? Um, you know, we all I think have learned from, you know, in part from watching other people, and and that's true. You know, whether you're a coder or a designer or you know a writer or anything. So, you know, we all start as novices and just because some of us are like farther along the path than others, you know, that it's, it's not like anything against you. So I used to be really um, sort of like, I used to doubt myself a lot about my coding ability. You know, I, I would see people that were my age who were, you know, way more advanced than me. And, you know, now that I'm in my 30s, I see people who are 10 years younger than me who are way more advanced than me. But you know, what I wasn't seeing was that these people, you know, they might have had different um, upbringings than me. They might have had different advantages. Um, I found out a lot of times, like most of the time when someone uh, was like better than me, 
at my age or younger is because like their dad was a software engineer or you know hopefully soon it could be their mom was a software engineer um, so you know you, you, you don't make assumptions of things you don't know um, don't be afraid to admit to ignorance just don't say like you know just don't scoff at something and be like oh you know I I'm too above learning this you know like if you're um, you know, if you code Rails most of the time, but you know your company needs like some touching up on a WordPress site, don't you know? Don't be like, oh, I don't know that because it's like you know it's beneath my pay grade, you know. Or or if you really do refuse to work <laughs> work on it, then tell them so ahead of time and don't just you know try to try to shirk it. Um, so another thing with communication is you know always provide updates like people coding is a very abstract activity it's it can be difficult for people who aren't coders to understand just what it is you're doing all day like oh so you spent like eight hours and you have five lines of code okay uh, what were you doing all day well you know you were probably designing and you're probably analyzing the problem so even if you have you know no product that you can show someone you know, tell them, like, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have an update for you today. I was doing this, this, and this. You know, you don't have to explain yourself, but, you know, don't, don't be afraid to, like, tell people what you're really doing. Um, you know, they, they may not know how to code, but they understand, like, how to solve problems, and they understand that sometimes, you know, you just need to think about something for a while. Um, and then um, a th my third point for how to be a conscious coder is to be flexible. So I haven't achieved this by any means, but I'd like to you know, strive to be a chameleon as a coder. So if I go into someone else's code, I don't want to go in there and muck it up you know, with my personal style if it's going to uh, just confuse things, like if it's going to be um, in conflict with how this code base is already set up. You know, there's a difference between um, you know, fixing like obviously uh, you know, malformed code and just like stylistic decisions. Like, you know, I've worked with plenty of people who are very adamant about using tabs or using spaces. So a long time ago, you know, I got over myself to say, okay, like if you want to use tabs, that's cool. I'll, I'll do that too. And if you want to do spaces, that's fine as well. Because um, again, ultimately it's all about solving the problem and, you know, no one's going to be the thing about code is no one's going to be looking at it. They're going to be looking at what does it do. And the user of your software is not going to care whether the code is using tabs or spaces. So um, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to be flexible. Um, you know, another one is with um, your business constituents. You can, um, you know, if people have different ideas for how to solve things or for how like, an interface should look, um, you know, give your opinion, but if they're adamant, you know, sometimes it can be good to just let, let people see, like, how things would turn out if you do it their way, you know, um, or you might be surprised yourself and their way might turn out to be better. So, you know, give people a chance to, to have input, you know, let, let things fail sometimes if, um, if you think that's going to, you know, make a greater point. Uh, because ultimately, you know, if, if you're seen as someone who is too rigid, um, you know people aren't really going to like working with you. They're not going to want to help you in any way. And you know if you're working in an organization, you know everyone needs to help each other. So it's it's important to try to be flexible uh, where you can. And um, my my last point uh, is probably the most important one, and that's don't be an ass. So. I mean, it might seem self-explanatory. I mean, I'm sure all of us have seen, you know, like Nick the Computer Guy on SNL. You know, it's, it's the tried and true stereotype of the IT person or the coder is that, you know, it's their way or the highway. You know, they're the guru. You're just the, you know, just the, the business analyst or the, the paper pusher or whatever. Um, just I, I try every day you know, I have to make sure that I am not, you know, treading on anyone else as I do my job. Um, so one of the biggest things that I've seen in my experience so far is um, 
sometimes, you know, as a coder, someone will ask you for something ridiculous uh, that like clearly doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, it's not the best way to do things. Um, and they'll just say, no, we can't do that. Don't do that. First of all, that's almost never true. It, it's almost always possible to do anything. It may, you know, take like 10 times longer. Um, it may make no sense from a business perspective, but it can be done. So telling someone that something is impossible is, is lying almost all the time. And it's going to piss them off too. You know, they're, they're not going to understand why, first of all. You know, to you it might be obvious, but they, you know, have good reasons for, for wanting the things they want. And, you know, their ideas might be different from yours. They come from a different perspective. So instead of just saying no, you know, and I've done this lots of times, and I have to check myself to say, you know, yes, you know, we could do it that way, uh, but, you know, here are a couple other options uh, for things to do. Or, you know, actually, that's a great idea, but what if we, um, you know, do it this way, it'll be faster, uh, it'll take less time to code, um, you know, the browser will actually work after we implement this. Um, and similarly, um, just sort of being calm. Uh, th these two things go hand in hand. You know, it's, it's not life or death. You know, the, if something takes a week longer than you thought it would take, but it's the right thing to do, then say that and explain, you know, the rationale for what you want to do. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's never a good idea to do something that you don't think is right without at least explaining, you know, what, what the alternative would mean. Um, and, you know, other times you might, you might do something that turns out wrong and maybe it causes a bug in production or whatever and people are freaking out in the business. You know, if you also start freaking out, that's, you know, that's just not going to be productive. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a unique situation, I guess, to be under the gun like that. But, uh, you know, when something's not working and you're on the clock to fix it, um, you know, you just kind of have to step back, like, and I still struggle with this all the time. Um, you know, step back and think about, okay, you know, what's the problem here? What am, what am I actually trying to solve? Instead of just, like, rushing out a fix, like, there are so many times where I've just, like, pushed something without, you know, even looking it over for a second, and, like, 80% of the time, there's a syntax error. You know, that's, it's just rushing. Not only does it make other people rush, too, and feel you know more uh, you know more scared than they perhaps should. Um, you know, even if you don't know how you're going to fix something, just you know, if you project an attitude of calm, people, other people will calm down. They'll be you know less harsh towards you if you struggle to fix something, um, and you know, things will just work more smoothly. You, you it. It's sort of, um, you want to try to like remove the oppositional uh, mindset from, from everything you do, basically. Um, so, you know, one of the other things you can do is to just like say yes by default. Um, even if you don't know like how something's going to work, you know, admit that and say, um, I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to try it for you. I'm going to, you know, take X number of hours and I'm going to try to figure out how to make this work um, you know as opposed to just try looking for like reasons that things won't work you know it's a totally different mindset from I'm going to try to solve your problem the best I can to this is going to put me out I'm not sure what to do here I don't like this I'm uncomfortable um, you know so we're just not going to solve the problem in that in the way that you want because I, you know, I can't get over my feeling of insecurity about it. You know, I, I feel that all the time and it's, it's, you have to make a constant effort to sort of, st again, step back from the actual coding problem and look at the problem in a larger uh, perspective. You know, try to see the problem that everyone else is seeing. Um, so these are just, so these are just a few ways that I've, 
experience in you know only a few years of ways to go. And the reason I said that coding is just a prerequisite, and then it's not really about code, is again, you know, you're not code isn't the purpose of the problem. You know, if there was a way to solve problems without code, we would do it. So, um, you know, the the way to like advance as a coder and to get better and to get um, you know, to, to be able to collaborate with people in a way that will get you what you want, whether it be um, working on more interesting problems or making more money or you know, becoming a manager if you want, although I don't necessarily suggest that. Um, you, know, you, you have to look at yourself as more than a coder. You have to look at yourself as a liaison between the technology and the problem. You, know, you are sort of like a go-between. And you know, take pride in the fact that you can translate real-world problems into this weird language that does these things that most people don't understand. And you know, don't look down on people who don't understand it. Try to help them. Try to help them see what your problems are, uh, why things can only be done you know, in a certain number of ways, and why some things just won't work. Um, just try to cultivate that understanding and try to be um, you know, empathetic to what other people's problems are, even if they're different from yours. And that's all I got. Um. <laughs>